Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we make learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that we drop. Now let's get started. So now, very important subject matter that I want to discuss today. The regulation of respiration, or you can call it the regulation of breathing. Now, no, regulation is about control. Okay, so what do you actually control? What do you control? You are controlling the concentration of those gases in the blood. That's, that's, that's what it, it's all about. Oxygen and carbon dioxide. When oxygen is low, it wants to restore it back. When carbon dioxide is too high, it wants to expel more of it. Okay, so by so doing, it regulates how fast and how deep your breathing is. Do you understand that now? So, and for every control system, you know that there are sensors, okay, afferent to control center, the efferent that will affect the change or correction. So, just have that in mind. So, very straightforward Respir control of respiration. We can divide it into two, although they work together. We can call it the neural control. Neural control. We can also put the chemical control. Okay? But everything in the end has to do with it will still lead to using the respiratory centers and using nerves. Okay? But the chemical control is talking about the fact that it's sensing the levels of CO2 and oxygen in the blood. There are sensors like that, chemoreceptors. But in the neural control, what you are focusing on now is the respiratory center just at rest. You are just, for example, you are sleeping. You just you constantly breathe in and out automatically. There is something that controls it. So it's automatic, it's just like pacemaker cells of the heart. Okay, you no, know, the heart has pacemaker that continuously fire action potentials to make the heart beat. The same thing, there are some pacemakers that just continuously make the inspiratory muscles and so on to continue to contract and relax, contract in a constant manner. Then the chemical control is to now control the levels if there's change. Okay, so let's deal with the neural. Now you have two major centers of respiration. You have the medullary centers, medullary centers that's located in the medulla oblongata. Okay, then you have the pontine centers, pontine, you have the pontine center that's located in the pons. You know, these two structures they are in the brain stem called the brain stem pons medulla and midbrain they make up the brain stem all right so medulla oblongata and pons so in the medullary center you now have two groups of neurons one of them is called the dorsal Let's just abbreviate it. Dorsal respiratory group of neurons. And you have the ventral respiratory group of neurons. Okay? Then in this pontine center, also too, you have the pneumotaxic center. Pneumotaxic. And you have amnustic center. All right, so we are very, very easy to understand. Don't get confused. Dorsal, okay? Dorsal respiratory group of neurons in the medullary center. So what does this one control? It controls the inspiration, okay? So the cells, those group of neurons there, they control inspiration in the sense that they send 
action potentials they fire and they send efferent signals to where the in spiritual muscles the diaphragm they activate the phrenic nerve to make the diaphragm to contract and also the external intercostal muscles that's what the ROG is all about inspiration do you understand that now it's as simple as that then this next one of course straightforward the ventral respiratory group they do what they are in charge of expiration but look at where there's the catch you know expiration is a passive process it's just you select like, for example you stretch a rubber band you don't need force to make it go back the elasticity called elastic recoil so they in normal quiet breathing they are not active they don't contract expiratory muscles because expiration is a passive process it just depends on the elastic recoil going back to its original but when there is forced expiration for example you are doing exercise or you have a respiratory problem then you don't bring to labor breathing then this ones they fire and contract the expiratory muscles but there is another function that they perform okay and that's what this is where those in quote pacemaker cells that's the cells that continuously fire to make respiration a continuous process they send signals to this one this is where the main work is inspiration which is the active process. so they send signals continuously continuously 12 in a minute or 16 normal respiratory rate okay so that's where the pacemaker cells are located in a place called the pre bodzinga complex Budzinga complex okay that's where those special cells are to control the continuous breathing rate and firing okay so that's that so now you enter the pontine center this pneumothacic center what does it do do you know, know what it does it helps to cut off the signal of this drg so when you inspire like this to a certain level it sends signal to cut it off to stop it so that expiration can happen are you getting it now so in another sense it also helps to control the rate rate of breathing you see that now it helps to control the rate of breathing when it takes this one you're taking air at a certain level to cut off the signal so by so doing it can help to control the rate of breathing the pneumotaxic center then the amnestic center not much is understood about it but some studies have been shown that they control what the depth depth of breathing you see that now so this this the neural control so the next thing we're going to be talking about is that the chemical control of respiration they go they work hand in hand all right so i'm going to deal with that after this break so don't go anywhere after this break all right you're welcome back so now chemical control like i said they work hand in hand okay so the chemical control of respiration has to do with chemoreceptors located in certain parts of the, the body that can sense oxygen levels and CO2 levels. Do you understand that now? And even hydrogen ion levels. Okay, so let, let's go right into it. In this chemical, you have two types of chemoreceptors. For the chemical you have the peripheral peripheral chemoreceptors and you have the central chemoreceptors okay central chemoreceptors in the medulla in the brain okay the medulla then the peripheral chemoreceptors they are located 
in what is known as the aortic aortic and carotid bodies bodies okay the aortic body and you have the carotid body around the carotid artery and all of that so that's that's where the periphera periphera means outside the brain the periphery so those are where the camera receptors and what how do they function it's very very easy to understand the main thing they monitor this periphery the periphery first is oxygen levels especially when oxygen partial pressure starts going below 60 millimeters of mercury i'm sure you understand this when we talked about the oxygen dissociation curve that between 60 and 100 the curve is just like it's almost horizontal little change from 60s where there's a lot of change so at 60 millimeters of mercury the partial pressure is still 90 percent at 100 it's 95 so very little change despite the wide so it becomes more sensitive when it starts getting 60 and below okay so it now they, they those those receptors they can generate action potentials and then they send afferent signals through the glossopharyngeal nerve cranial nerve 9 you know that and vagus nerve to where the drg when oxygen so hypoxia oxygen is low so that you can take in more air inspiration it fires and stimulates it then this one will now go and stimulate the diaphragm it's very easy to understand do you understand that now so that's what that's what happens okay so then this central chemoreceptors what they are most sensitive to is hydrogen ions you know what happens when there is increase now hydrogen ion directly cannot cross the blood brain barrier but look at what happens when there is increase in co2 hmm? there's increase in co2 you can cause acidosis and so on so what happens is that co2 can easily cross the blood brain barrier so co2 goes and crosses very easily and then goes inside the brain and combines with water to form what carbonic acid you know you know this equation carbonic acid which now dissociates to form bicarbonate and what hydrogen ion so is this hydrogen ion that will now go and stimulate the drg so that it can breathe out the excess co2 so mainly metabolic acidosis acidosis a lot of h when there's high co2 it produces high hydrogen ions acidosis so it stimulates this so that you can breathe taking breathing and out so that you can expel more of the co2 so that, that is no it's not more than that but this is a regulation of respiration very easy stuff all right the details are in the books you can get the links from the description box all right so i'm going to see you in the next video